The Tampa Bay area lost its two big vintage flea markets that had been here for 50 years, and now a new one has sprung up, and some of our favorite vintage and antique dealers are back from what we hear we can't wait to see. All right, it is chilly for Florida. It is only 54 degrees. It's horrible. But we're trying one more time. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, we are, you know, sometimes you have to hit a market a few times to really learn it. And we were told that Sunday is the day with the most vintage and that it is at this end of the meet. So we're going to go there. Spanish silver. Spanish silver, really? Oh, uh, yeah. That's neat. That's what I was hoping for. I went to the East Coast. It's a little different copper bracelet there. I don't think it's one of our big names, but it's interesting. Is that Mexican opal or fire opal? It, it looks like fire opal. That's something different. I'm sure that people are hiding in their car and only getting out when somebody wants something, which I can't say I blame them. That's a nice... That's it. Looks like. Oh, I'll sell it to you for 40 bucks, but it's worth 250 And I'm like, obviously, you know better than that. I can't believe it, but for all the lenses I have left, I'm actually getting low on older cameras. After having had a huge collection that I sold off over the past few years. So, ooh, 250 Boy, so far we are hitting some really ambitious prices. That looks comfy. Some people just go place to place and live in their place as they're doing it. They're just getting set up because it is cold. We figured people get a late start. Ah, b and Railroad stool. It used to be, uh, it's actually the step to get up into the train. Oh, that? Yeah. Oh, cool. And it says it on the side. Hmm, that's interesting. I've actually had luck with these before. I'm going to have to look this one up. I don't know what they sell for now. I got more than that for the one I had out west. That step is a good deal, and I think I'm going to get it, even though it's rusted because it's got that big b and on it. It'll sell. Royal Bay Ruth. That's a pretty piece. The Goose Girl. There must be a lore about the Goose Girl. Headless Motorcyclist. How cute this is. It's a bank. It's just plastic, but that's great. I love that. My number. <laughs> Measures time of a phone call. A calculograph. I used to buy things like this, and they would sell, and I'm sure this one would too, but boy, then you have to haul a big heavy thing around. 35 on the very cute original head base. This is a 60s one. Relpo. Very nice. I like the little fish shakers in the stand. Those are made in Japan. Interesting. I have to ask about those. Well, someone came right up and looked at it, and I said, I'll take it before he could get it. So now it's mine. That happens sometimes. So these with the solid top were just meant to be little miniatures as opposed to the rest of them that were supposed to be salt and pepper shakers. So now I've got to look at these a little differently. Mineral spring blats. How much are the little bottles? A dollar a piece? Okay, thank you. Well, I found this many that are in good shape were made just as samples rather than as shakers, and so they can be single and they're a dollar each. And they offered me a shot. It's 10 in the morning. Old Burner's soda glasses from Detroit. I have friends up there who love Burner's. And then this one's a bubble up. $2 each. I'm going to take all that. These prehistoric creatures are horseshoe crabs. And they swim around in the swamps and bayous of Florida. And there would be a crab that lives in there ordinarily. But people collect the shells. They actually shed the shells as they grow. Wow, they're awesome. Well, I have to have one for posterity, actually. That one's got... That one says Clearwater Beach, yes. He, he's, he's a tourist. <laughs> I got one that says Earwater Beach, because I lost the C and the L. <laughs> I had a nice little story for it the last time I was here, but I'm just... <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, this one's got his... Yeah, and they molt. They're not dead. They molt. Right, they molt. Exactly, yeah. I know. At first, I didn't know that, and I had a bunch of little itty-bitty tiny ones, and I felt so bad. Oh, yeah, because you think you're killing the babies, but no, no, it's not that. They get bigger. They would just be laying in the mangroves, and I remember you taking one on the plane to Maryland, and it getting crunched. Oh, I know. Well, the wind. I should have thought of that. I knew I needed a coat, but...
That'll just make us uh, move through here really fast. Oh yeah, that's neat. And then the uh, Age of Innocence. Only one Age of Innocence. Hello. Looks like we got a whole bunch of these, and I've never seen yeah, this one. They're different. They've got different uh, pictures. Interesting. I'm used to these ones with the little uh, bicycles and horseless carriages and things, but I haven't seen the ones with the... Oh, they're all doing various sports on the green. Okay. Well, isn't that cute? Well, thank you. Well, she's got some neat stuff here and some older stuff. All gone is going to be Mary Hadley or Louisville Stoneware. Mary Hadley. We'll see $5 each here. I like the Shakers. They're 30s, but I'm not sure which company. Very stalwart boxer there. Uh, the Sunbonnet babies are cleaning away. Pretty color for the decanter there. I think that's a home guard. It tastes better in a glass container, but now they're all plastic. The new guess who? I don't want to guess. Little QP saucer from the early days of QP's, probably about 1915 or 20. Definitely seeing more of the old stuff here today. These are never expensive because they didn't make a lot of other stuff, but these are nice. These are uh, Chadwick China is the name on these, and they are from the 1940s. You'll see them generally without the mark, so that's a good thing to know. Tables of beads and junk jewelry. A lot of this looks pretty new. Ooh, I see something I like, though. This is interesting style clip is from the 60s and 70s. Thank you. Well, this is Tammy, and she is a jewelry dealer who, she gets neat stuff. She wholesales to other dealers. She gets a really wide variety, and she's pretty fair on her prices. You know, something she has to get more for, just like me or anybody else. But I usually find stuff with her. I've already got this piece for $10 that I have set aside, and I'm going to look at some more. Look in here. There's, um, I got Bakelite. This is all new stuff in here. Oh, that's nice. Well, I haven't yeah. seen you in a long time because uh, the flea market changing, so I, I can't. Uh, it's all new to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How much is the Bakelite piece? Um, I, I want... Uh, I was going to put like 60, 65 a piece or... Yeah, they're like nice because they're black and there. carved. Yeah. yeah, it's totally fair and there's room in that, but I don't know if I have that customer right now. Oh. Well, yeah, I go, I go down to 50 just on one. Oh, well, thanks. I'll think about it. They are really nice. Coins, tokens. Wow, she has a lot of stuff. Let's see what she has over here. I'm curious about your cameos and your scarab. No, that's great. I really appreciate that's these. Weird, isn't it? Yeah, I kind of like that. It's like yeah. almost like African trade yeah, beads, but painted. Might, I don't know if they're amber or uh, bakelite. This or is Maasai tribal jewelry. This does sell. Well, it's really great to be seeing some of the people that we have lost from the old flea market here again. It's nice to have my jewelry dealer who always has a few things for me. It's great to find a guy who has a railroad step for sale at a good price. So we're having some fun. I'm so glad this flea market is back. I'd be even more glad if this wasn't the coldest day that we have had all winter in Florida. Fun teeter-totter bookends there. A liquid compass. This is going to be 1950s Japanese. Okay, so I see huge ring plates at a dollar each, but I think that's actually what's in the bin. New Haven alarm. That is a cute old metal case. I wonder if it works. Thank you. The alarm works. That's great. It really works. <laughs> I did bring some new stuff out from last time, so I don't know if anything will strike your face. Are these? They are. Yeah, those are interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting look there. Oh, I can do it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no, everybody's hands are cold. I don't mind if you don't mind. You can hold that. I'll just grab that. And uh, if it was anything but a bar pin, but that is really cute. Yeah, the carving is nice. Yes. I might need that just to wear today. These are book plates from Roycroft Books. There's the Roycrofter symbol. The plates are going to be old. 
The frames are newer, but they definitely would work in a craftsman bungalow. If you want yes, work well done, select a busy man. The other kind has no time. Creative is the right thing to do without being told. The greatest mistake you can make in life is to continually be fearing that you'll make one. Well, that's two weeks in a row, so she's one of my new favorite dealers. And let's see if we can make some more friends. Lots of jewelry here, but this seems more just sort of general and contemporary and maybe wearable, but not really vintage. Lots and lots of it, though. Ooh, this sounds good on a cold day. Jelly and toast. So this was the jelly, and this is by Kelvins, who made those little pixies people are fond of. Okay, we're getting out of the vintage stuff, but yet this table over here looks like it might have promise. Anna Lee dolls. Yeah, they're saying uh, that, and I can kind of understand why, that everybody's sort of walking by with their hands in their pockets because it's so cold. So there's all these people here, but they're like, yeah, we're not really selling very much. So they've been pretty good on negotiating because of it, actually. Yeah, bro. Probably ought to go back and get that thing and make a car run because I kind of got an armful somehow. Oh, the uh, step thing? The step thing. These things are kind of interesting, but I think they're newer, but I don't know. Yeah, the gray, that gray color on the bottom is a clue. This guy's, that's a different color. Is the tip been polished? I think it's okay. Hmm. Yes, I'd like that for $5, please. Now, this curious looking bust here is by Fred Press. And Fred Press was a sculptor. He worked for the Rubel Company. We saw their work at Andrea and Friends. He did a lot of their designs, and then he figured out he could do his own designs and have them made just like Rubel was doing. So he made a whole line of glassware and housewares, and that's worth about a hundred and a half. And this is cool. I think this is Dansk, or at least it looks like it, but a lot of other companies did these cast iron for the taper candles around 1970. Before power steering, they would put knobs like this yellow one with the flower in it on the steering wheel, and you would hold that to steer the wheel instead of having to turn the huge wheel yourself. There's a pretty piece of Bristol glass. It's just so lovely, and the prices are so cheap, still amazing. This is very orderly and neat. Usually when they put things on the ground, it's just a big heap, but you can see lots of nice 19 teens and 20s painted and transferware plates. But the one that jumps out at me is this guy. This is an Australian swag man. The swag was the bundle they carried on their backs. These were basically migrant laborers who moved around Australia. I think he's stealing that sheep. I'm getting a different picture from this pictograph than I think maybe they intended. We don't see a lot of ceramics from Australia in this country. It's kind of fun. Then on this end of the blanket, amongst a lot of glass, we see the Pyrex stand. Those actually sell pretty well, even in the clear. And this piece, which is Spode's cowslip pattern. This was a very popular pattern of dinnerware not that long ago, and this piece still sells for something of a premium. They used to go for about 40 bucks, now probably about 25 or so. There's a little bit of stoop labor involved in shopping at a flea market, but I have to say at least they've got the stuff out where you can see it. Here's a Gonder vase with the 50s look. And this is a Rolo tape. I actually have some success selling these. I think some people like to use them to survey their land still. That's what it was for. You roll it along and it measures the amount of, I think you can adjust it to feet or meters if I'm not mistaken, and maybe even inches that you have traveled with that rolled. And if you don't have a pot to, well, you know the expression. My mom was a huge fan of these portafiles to keep her records in the early 70s, but this one looks like it was for recipes, and when they have the printed sides, they're actually starting to be pretty collectible now because they have great graphics. Carl is more a collector, although he will buy things to flip, whereas I've already taken a run back to the car with my stuff. Behind the stack of license plates is this sweet print. It's had some hand embellishment with both hand tinting and hand painting, which was very popular to do about 1910. They wanted more than I could pay for this, but this is definitely counterculture era. This is late hippiedom, probably around the early 70s, with the hand hammered brass buckle and the hand tooled leather with, well, a certain plant represented in abstract. 
They sure made a lot of corn flour blue, but I sure sell a lot of it too. And this piece is a little harder to find. I like the rectangular bakers. I think I see a glass carboy. Yes, the water bottle there. I sell those pretty easily. People love to fill them with coins. I don't know how they lift them. Cast iron is really cool, but I'm finding at swap meets lately that there's no mystery to it. You can see it's a large logo Griswold, for example, and people price them pretty much retail anymore, it seems. License plates are a staple at flea markets in this part of the country. If I find ones that are older or commemorative or perhaps handicapped, that sort of thing, I'll pay a few dollars each for them. Well, we're starting to get to the part that's just the flea market, meaning anybody brings anything. And sometimes you'll find bargains in these piles, but I don't see anything here. And she's cold and getting done because she's already got a free sign. Let's see, way out here. Sometimes if you go way far away from the other dealers, you'll find someone. And hey, it's my friend Bill. I haven't seen him in ages. Bill gets some pretty cool stuff. He gets a lot of little stuff. And I like a lot of little stuff. And he really, frankly, could be a professional dealer. He knows his stuff. He usually prices close to retail, but he'll almost always give me a deal on something if I see something I like. He usually has a bigger display, but I see his hands in his pockets. I think he's very chilly today and probably didn't put a lot of stuff out. Ooh, Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. Let's see what else he's got in there. I see the phone dialer underneath. That's that little black plastic thing with the knob. Yeah, more uh, Gene Autry and Roy Rogers stuff. He definitely gets the Western things. He, he gets a lot of local interest stuff, too. Usually he has a lot of Tampa Bay area things that uh, do well for me when I'm doing shows and selling, like, the Web City Department Store cards there. Here's a flash view pin. We see Vote Humphrey, but I think that's when he was... Yeah, there we go. There's LBJ. That was a big thing in the early 60s to do. El Verso Cigar, that's about 1920. Ooh, yes, and a certain product that every time I get that tin, it does sell. I can't imagine why. Well, this does not feel like a Florida orange kind of day. I'm going to go home. Okay, we made it back home, and Carl took his wonderful head bases, but I got some pretty good buys too, so let's do a little haul video and see what we ended up with. Now, bear in mind, this all came from one swap meet, one house sale at a community sale and one yard sale. So it's a pretty good haul for not a whole lot of uh, effort, honestly. I was pretty happy. I'm going to start with my biggest purchase and the most major piece I got, and that is the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, the good old B&O. Any of you folks who played Monopoly will remember the B&O Railroad because it served Atlantic City and so it ended up on the Monopoly board. This is a little worn, in normal ways that you would expect, but they are very hard to find now. Most of them went to scrap years ago, especially when these companies stopped providing passenger service and Amtrak took over. Almost all of these were thrown away. And so this one is a rare survivor and it's in great shape. You can stand on it. It's a great little platform. They usually sell for about 175 to 200 and I paid 80. So I was really happy with that. That was my big purchase of the day. But I probably am going to make more profit on some of these other items because some of the prices were really cheap on these. This orange Scandinavian bowl was about $6. The cap gun was 5 I did pay 15 for the McCoy butterfly vase. Those usually sell for about 50 so I was happy to do that. Only $5 for the Viking Epic bird. That was an interesting lesson. She was selling mostly clothing, new stuff, and that just happened to be on the table, and the vintage dealers did not go to her table because they didn't see old stuff. So I always walk through the whole market and check out everything. Behind is a Bauer chop plate. I paid $8. They sell for about $30. That's from the 1930s, the ring pattern. That predated Fiesta by six years. The yellow Murano bowl with the gold in it is a great color combination. That was under $10. The bright orange is a Villarian Bach glass piece. That was under 5 The confetti lucite, or actually acrylic bracelet, I paid $15 for that. It's a little more than I would usually give, but that's a $30 to $35 cuff. These little beer bottles and tumblers were between $1 and $2 each. A few of the obscure ones could go for quite a bit of money. They're all going to sell for at least $8 to $10 each, so that's probably my biggest profit margin right there. 
those two Werner's glasses, the bubble up glass that you see in the middle, and all those beer bottles together were $15. And just the Blatt's beer sells for more than that. Now that we have some sun, I see I have some cleaning to do. The frogs were under $5. I always buy those when I see them. They rarely have the rhinestone eyes, but they do have anatomically correct human features underneath, which I will just leave to your imagination, but that is what sells them. They should sell for about 12 as a novelty. Speaking of novelties, this is tawdry looking, and when you open it up, it has a toothbrush and toothpaste in it. Isn't that sweet? Frederick Remington, this is one of his World War I cavalry prints, and I would estimate this was a $25 print. I believe I paid seven for that. Paid $5 for the Mary Hadley dish. The child's dish that says All Gone is definitely one of the more desirable ones. I paid $3 for Barney's Yes Sir Senators. Apparently Barney used to say that to the people who would come into the market club in Chicago. And that became the slogan. That was made by Royal China in the 50s. I just sold that same piece for $15, so I was happy to pay three. I think I'm going to keep the horseshoe crab shell. That was $5. The New Haven clock, that's a pretty good one, actually. It's in great shape, and it works really well. I paid $15. They sell for about $50. The Red Sidden Striker Bowl, just a great color. You don't see reds as much as you see pastels. And that was under $5, so I picked that up. I really like Sid and Stryker. Interesting fused glass. The Fenton Candle Ring from 1969 was $5, and the Cubist Cream and Sugar, the pink, from the Depression area were $4 for the set. That was just such a almost below thrift store price that I had to get it. Speaking of below thrift store prices, all these things I'm going to show you next were a dollar each. The candle climber on the left, I believe, is a Holt Howard. The one on the right is, I think he's left in this Christmas one. Yes, it's got the left in label. The little dog, which I believe is Cam Ark, the one sniffing there. That was a dollar. This clothesline reel was a dollar from the 1930s. And people will use these, but they also just enjoy the look of it. The turkey salt and pepper shaker from the 50s was a dollar, and these two English Blinton's cat mugs from the late 70s, which sell for about $9 each. I've been picking up on mugs lately because I've seen the other YouTubers who are saying, yes, some mugs are very collectible now, and these apparently are among them. And again, they were a dollar each, so you can't go wrong there. I only paid 10 for this bar set with the coasters and the bale and the Four tumblers, I typically get about 35 for those. And then this little Scandinavian glass piece was under $5. I'm not sure which company did it. I might be able to see in the sun. We do have sun back today as I'm filming this. But it's an older one and it has enough wear that I'm going to have to look hard for that signature. But that was a happy haul. So I've got to say, that's the reason that I like to shop community sales, I like to shop flea markets, I like going places where you're likely to find a whole lot of things in one place. Sometimes the thrift stores are great that way, sometimes individual garage sales are great that way, but if you go to the places that are estate sales or flea markets or are part of a big community having a bunch of sales at one time, you have much more of a guarantee that you're going to come home with a decent haul, and we sure did. So that was a lot of fun to show you. And in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.